Hi everyone. Well, Mark's working. Right, so I'm going to be talking about influencing meat puppets with memes. Um, so yeah, my name's Bogan, Captain Bogan to you today, if you see me wandering around. Um, I have four babies, three of them made of flesh and bone, and a steel, me steel baby here. Um, my Datsun 120Y. Um, with this owning a car like this, people will stop me. Like, I'll, I'll be at the traffic lights, window down, um, engine purring, and someone will come up to me and tell me how they met their wife and they consummated their vows in the back seat of a car just like mine. <laughs> like, people will leave love notes on my car. I'll, I'll get back to the car park and there'll be a love note, and it won't be a love note for me. It'll be a love note for my car. I love your car, your car's amazing. Give me a message any time you want to meet up and talk about cars, so, yeah, very special. And my family's also special. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, I, when I was growing up, I didn't really have um, much of an interest in politics. My interest in politics would extend to doing shit like this. Um, yeah, it, w it was pretty basic, really. Um, Allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, um, we also when I was at high school, um, there would, around election time, there'd be lots and lots of these sort of billboards up, um, and me and my friends would come along, and we allegedly um, would smash them all down, um, until, and leave the legalised cannabis ones standing, of course. <laughs> um, my father was a police officer, um, and... <laughs> And one day I was at home and this, um, sometimes his friends w would come around and visit and I knew who most of his friends were, but one time this, um, this officer came around to visit and I did not know who this officer was. My father told me to go and get the door and it turned out to be someone else's friend, but I'm pretty sure, um, because the police had stopped us after we'd done this and then given us a round of questioning, we're like, oh, we don't know what had happened, must have been someone else. Um, but yeah, he had found out that it was me and, um, got a new officer to come around and have a wee, wee chat and just got the shits up me and nothing actually happened, but yeah. Okay, <laughs> so my presentation. So after that, um, w as soon as sort of um, elections started involving computers and technology, um, and I'm not going to be talking about election machine hacking or anything like that, I'm more the social online side of it, it started to pique my interest. So today I'm going to talk about the New Zealand election and we're going to look a bit about the US election um, how to create your own troll army, how to do this at home. And then some countermeasures that um, you might want to take. Right, so we had an election recently, we all know that, um, and most of the advertising for that election was um, you'd receive a coloured piece of cardboard in your uh, mailbox and didn't matter if you lived in South Auckland or Wainui Amata or in Brooklyn, you got the same piece of cardboard and it told you, I don't know, I just threw it in the bin. <laughs> um, they also had some um, terrestrial television advertisements. I don't know who watches that stuff anymore. Um, if it's not on YouTube or on Netflix, I'm not watching it. Newspaper, again, um, I think old people read that. Um, some, they have them at cafes, actually, and you can... Oh, yeah, yeah, I am old. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, billboards again, some social media, but there was no real direct targeted advertising, the stuff we really enjoy. Um, and we um, had an election and um, Jacinda Arden was elected. I'm pretty sure that someone from the CERT actually did this defacement. I've seen them wearing those pirate t-shirts around and talking like pirates. They may have been involved. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Um, so there was some social media impact um, on stuff.co.nz, comments went through the roof. Um, there are a number of adverts appearing on Facebook, so if you're in your own echo chamber with all your buddies who are Labour supporters, you might see some Labour targeted advertisements. Um, but it w there was nothing untoward, there's nothing like, lock her up, lock her up. It was, um, yeah, it was just like, here's some great policies that we're implementing, or want to implement. Um, so there was a guy down in Dunedin, or there is a guy called David Hood, and he was actually um, conducting analysis on it. So he was um, grabbing, he, he set up some bots to monitor all the different Twitter accounts, he would pull down all the tweets, 
and he used um, R to do um, analysis on, um, on all of these tweets to figure out if there was anyone or any bots sort of operating in the New Zealand space. And so this one here, um, just Twitter accounts talking about tax, any PR people want to own up, you can see there's 20 tweets there. Um, here's another one, nerd rage quantified. So he had measured the sentiment around people talking about um, Stephen Joyce and Bill English um, to see um, uh, how angry they were about these people. But again, a really low number of tweets. Then he looked at um, links, uh, oh, sorry, p uh, parties that were replying to themselves, and you can see there New Zealand First is talking to themselves a lot, which is not surprising. <laughs> um, and then we've got here, he was analysing also the links as well, where um, people were feeding out to other articles. And yeah, not a great deal. So we can sort of discern from that, and from what I've talked to other people, um, that there wasn't much meddling going on in our local election. The US, however, is a different uh, can of worms. So um, political advertising over there is a huge, huge thing. Um, Trump was mocked mercilessly for not spending money on traditional television ads like um, Crooked Hillary was. She spent 140 million on television adverts. Whereas Trump, he was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go on Facebook, and he set up Trump TV, which is some kind of live stream TV thing, um, and after, before and after the second debate, he raked in um, $9 million in two hour time frame. So instead of spending 140 million, he made 9 million. That's a lot better, right? Um, what we didn't realize at the time, that were, uh, Trump and his cronies were uh, launching a multi-pronged attack. So it was a blitzkrieg of sorts. Um, it was short, fast, well it wasn't that short, but it, w it was fast and it was powerful. Um, and they sort of um, sent the opposition to a tailspin. They didn't know what to do. And to accomplish this, they used a puppet. But not just one puppet, lots of puppets, sock puppets. And these sock puppets were turning out ads like this, or content like this, or memes like this. How to make America great again, like if you agree. So they're engaging with the audience. They've got this um, shocking image there. Um, and that, like if I show you most of these ads that they were creating, it's probably some kind of code of conduct violation because they're horrific. There's, this is them in, in small format. Oh, you can probably actually see those. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there, there's like people of um, Mexican people standing on landmines and blowing up in the air. Um, there's just horrible, horrible, um, racist, disgusting adverts that these people created to try and um, force their message on the Americans. So there was a person on Twitter who was uh, analysing um, from um, what was happening at the on the Twitter side of things and how many accounts were getting involved in it. Um, here they are searching followers for similarly named accounts, um, 63,099 accounts, and something looks a little bit strange about those accounts. Um, they look somewhat sequential. And what happens when you register a Twitter account, so say I'm registering Simon Howard, um, if Simon Howard's already taken, it'll be Simon Howard and then a series of random numbers. And so if you're using a bot to automate Twitter account registration, this is what it looks like. Um, so one of the largest nodes in that Twitter botnet was uh, an account called David Joe. And this account had been around for a while, since 2013, and this one was um, predominantly aligned with uh, UK um, manipulation. Uh, so they looked at, um, he looked at what time the uh, account was tweeting from, and so seems to be around Moscow time there, eight, doing a 12 hour shift. Um, and we'll see a bit later on that um, they actually do operate 24-7, but this account maybe was one that had been curated, like so it, was, it was someone's baby. They, they'd been looking after this account for a long time, and they didn't want to let any of the other analysts sort of jump on it, so they just did, uh, did their tweeting during business time. Um, you can see from this picture here that they're, um, they're tweeting around a variety of different topics. So they start off in 2013 talking about their... Um, UK IP, and then they talk about migrants, and then around the Brexit time, the pink part of the graph there, they're really ramping up the rhetoric about Brexit. Um, there's a bit of Trump mixed in there as well. 
Um, so you can see the, the change in what they're talking about as the, um, the agenda that they're trying to push changes. And all of this is happening from the Troll Factory or the Internet Research Agency. So this is a picture of their headquarters. Um, yeah, and in, and in Russia they actually call it the Troll Factory. Um, so they've got around $2.3 million in operational expenses. Um, there's 90 staff working, or there were 90 staff working um, fixed on this US campaign. Uh, 50 million subscribers, 100 million page views a week. And th uh, from what's come out with these congressional hearings, they had around $400,000 in budget. So 100K for Facebook ads, um, 270K for Twitter ads, um, Google ads. Um, they weren't advertising on Google Plus, I um, did find out. And I think, yeah, yes, Andrew. And I think they're also um, doing a bit on Reddit and buying some Reddit gold and gilding some stuff. So it's like a goddamn comedy sketch. A Russian troll sitting at his computer. Hmm, what would an American drink? Coca-Cola, of course. Let's give him a six-pack, nice and overindulgent. Oh, Brett West baby from Our World News on that um, that little quip. Yeah, so they were, they, these Russians are just, what's an American going to like? Let's feed them something. Six pack. Right, so it got me thinking, what will it take to run something like this um, myself? So you need to start with a good lead time. So I started about three months out and then realised, oh shit, this isn't enough time to really make a good run of this and influence New Zealand election, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the Russians for the US election, they started a year and a half out. Um, so you need to create a team, get all your sock puppets running, tailor your message, deliver it, and then monitor it to make sure that your message is having the de des desired effect. So it can't be that hard, right? So our team. So we need linguists um, who can write better English than I. We need psychologists who can figure out how to um, tailor the message to... Um, play with people's minds. We need de designers, artists, cartoonists to create the content. Um, we need DevOps to manage all our infrastructure for all our proxies and all our, um, and our AI machine learning infrastructure where we're going to start automating the creation of some of our content and automating creation on our social media profiles so that they stay live and they look legitimate. And then we're probably going to need some hackers as well because everyone loves hackers. Um, and they help us bypass captures, they help us um, figure out ways around the mechanisms that these companies are putting in place to detect these types of fake accounts. Um, so yeah, everyone needs a hacker. Eh? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so the US um, put together a publication uh, called JP13. Um, which the chiefs of staff, so that's Navy and Air Force and Army, um, it's the information operations guide. So they've actually written out a paper on how to plan, prepare, execute and assess information operations. And this is a really comprehensive document and it's awesome. So if you want to go and run one of these campaigns yourself, go and grab a copy of that PDF and get stuck in. If you do have a clearance, you may not be allowed to get it though. Um, so this is the, um, the information, so, that, so this is how they run information operations in the Joint Chiefs of Staff. So there's a lot, a lot of moving parts there. Um, a lot of acronyms, because they love acronyms. You will notice here that legal is involved, but we, we're not gonna need that where we're going. <laughs> yeah, allegedly where we're going. So this is my organisational structure. <laughs> yeah. So the cell chief, Captain Bogan here. Um, we've got a content creation lead, and they're going to be in charge of the psychologist, the linguist, um, strategic. Um, sorry, the designer and artist, and a meme consultant, um, Mr. Mango PDF. Um, he's on board. We had a lot of beers the other night. Well, I had a lot of beers. Um, <laughs> And he is, yeah, he's, he's on board. Um, we've got a DevOps lead there, and they're going to be looking after the DevOps resources, email engineer, AI engineer, um, 
and a couple of hackers as well. And then who else to lead a troll army but the one and only SS23. <laughs> yeah, so he'll have a couple of trolls under him. Um, yeah, so we're building um, Chaos IT City here. Has anyone seen this episode of South Park? Yeah, it's great. Right, so we want to build our team on the cheap. Right? I don't want to spend like lots and lots of money. I don't have a $2.3 million budget. So I'm going to outsource all these positions to contractors on, um, um, so you can use Elance, or uh, I think Elance has changed to something else now, freelance.co.nz. Um, and conduct all your online interviews, and then um, pay everyone in Bitcoin, because we want to, um, or some other hipto, uh, hipster cryptocurrency of the day, um, because we want to be kind of anonymous. So there's XBT Freelancer, where you can go and find these types of resources and pay them in um, Bitcoins. All right, this is a, um, the actual... The salary of 40 to 50,000 rubles with the schedule of work from 2100 to 0900 in the office in the Pramorsky district. Job duties include writing on the given topic, news information and analytical. Employee skills required are free English, including confident possession of written language and creativity. Yeah, so they were actually advertising on superjob.ru for um, trolls. This is a troll advert. This is what one looks like. This is how I hired Stephen. All right. So the sock puppet account creation. Um, we need to take some appropriate offset countermeasures as well to create um, this account. So. Fake name generator.com is great. You put in, you choose an ethnicity, you choose um, a gender, you can choose an age, and it will populate all these details, and then you can just go and plonk them straight into your social media account. And it'll give um, legitimate um, addresses and workplaces in that area as well where it's chosen um, things. So you don't need to think about anything, it's really neat. Um, when you're choosing the birth date on your sock puppets, make sure. It's not the first of the first 1970s or 31st of the 12th, because they look kind of dodgy when you're looking for automated accounts or, um, um, or these types of uh, maliciously created accounts. Um, backstop some family members there too. So if you're looking at a social media profile and there's, your name's John Smith and there's no Jane Smith and Mary Smith as cousins or family members, then uh, that's going to look a bit dodgy. It will depend on how deep your cover is going to be investigated to how far you need to go with this backstopping. But you want to do a fairly half ass job of it. <laughs> <laughs> so consider the purpose for which a profile photograph has been used as well and the source of that photograph. So one of the, most of the fake accounts that are on Facebook, someone's just gone to a pornography website taken a picture of a girl and then put that straight into their profile and like chopped it off here. Um, and as soon as you do a reverse image search for that photo, you see it leads back to all this pornography. So Facebook can also do those reverse image searches and then lead back to the account and figure out it's probably a fake account. Um, pro tip, just flip the picture and then upload it and then reverse image search won't bring up anything. Uh, also, make sure that you choose an address that exists in your profile. So, a couple of years ago, um, <laughs> at KiwiCon, um, we had some ticket, online ticket purchases, um, and this is when we'd integrated PayPal. And um, the fraud detection system came up, like flashing lights, fraud, fraud, fraud. Um, someone had purchased some tickets with their, um, their billing addresses, 123 Fake Street. We went and looked at all the accounts that had been registered under that name, and then we're like, hmm, pretty sure we know who this is. Uh, I think Metal or someone flicked off a quick email, and then, uh, yeah, there were some very embarrassed um, um, people that they, um, all their pseudonyms had been unmasked. Um, <laughs> the person who actually um, created the, um, um, it actually paid for the tickets and used that fake address, um, this picture was printed out and put on the cubicle wall. Um, for him to remember. <laughs> OPSEC. The only fraud we've ever had reported ever in the entire history of Kiwi 
Right, so offset countermeasures. You need proxies, obviously. You don't want all of your, if you're managing 100 accounts, you don't want them all to come out of your home IP address. That's a bad idea. Um, so you need proxies, you need to spin them up on AWS or something, somewhere um, that where you can still log into Facebook from. Um, burner phones as well. Um, you can use Twilio. So Twilio is a pretty neat service where you can just sign up and get a, um, a SMS number. Um, because you want to use SMS to um, bolster the validity of your profile, or you want to implement 2FA on your profiles to make them seem more legitimate. Um, Twilio doesn't support SMS for New Zealand numbers, so if you're creating uh, New Zealand profiles, you probably want um, New Zealand SMS numbers to go with them. So you could always create your own SMS service, right? Um, then you need base accounts. So I'm using um, Outlook for my feeder accounts, and then creating the Facebook and Twitter and stuff from using the Outlook.com address as a feeder. You don't want like um, dodgy hacker at mailinasia.com or some other like shitty service that's going to get blacklisted really quickly or already is blacklisted. So for the 2FA part, um, I didn't want to pay for Twilio because I'm cheap, um, and also I wanted to figure out a nice solution to this. So I looked at the SIM 800C, which is like a little, um, basically a cellular modem, and they're pretty cheap, but then you need to worry about how to get the, um, the serial line out of it, and that was going to be a bit of a problem. Um, so I went with USB modems, and I managed, I found that someone on TradeMe who was selling 10 of them for $90, and he said, oh yeah, I had heaps of them, so he gave me 20 for $90, so they ended up being $4.50 each. Um, SIM cards, uh, again I found someone on Trade Me. If you go to a Vodafone shop and you want a new SIM card, it costs $5 I think. It's like, that's ridiculous. So I found someone online who has got an unlimited supply of Vodafone SIM cards <laughs> and <laughs> is selling them for 50 cents each. And again I purchased um, uh, 10 or 15 of those and then it came, there's like 20 or 25 in the, in the envelope. So I'm not sure, I'm just getting free stuff, it's great. <laughs> Uh, you need a USB hub as well to run the stuff, so um, because each one of these modems, um, I think they draw about 500 milliamps, so you, it's hard to find a USB hub that can go bigger than 3 amps. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure why, I did talk to Fincham about this, um, yeah. And it can be, it's, as a bonus, you can use this little rig to spam your friends. <laughs> So you can't actually run that many in the hub, but it looks really cool, fully populated, doesn't it? <laughs> um, there's some really neat software that's already been developed for this purpose. So you can just use um, um, SOCAT and then like pipe AT commands directly into the dev TTY USB zero, or you can use SMS um, server tools number three um, with all your GSM modems, they all register as USB devices, and then there's a handler there that is just um, running AT commands to all the modems constantly and saying, hey, have you got a new message? Have you got a new message? As soon as it gets a new message, it pops it into a spooling folder, and then you can then read the messages out of the spooling folder and then like, feed them into something else that's automatically putting them into your um, Facebook account. Right, so... If you're creating lots of accounts, um, using the mobile version of any site, like mobile version of Facebook, mobile version of Twitter, it's a lot more cut down and you can scrape it and you can automate it a lot easier. Um, so Selenium or Grease Monkey for that. You can also allegedly steal existing accounts from dumps, um, but they're probably gonna get shot down after a, bit, after a number of time, uh, amount of time, because Facebook, They'll be mon monitoring those dumps as well, and they'll figure out, oh, all these accounts have been compromised, so let's shut them down. Managing lots of social media accounts is a pain in the backside. So there are some tools you can use to do this, however. There's Hootsuite and Buffer, um, and they're good. Um, Hootsuite for, a, I think it's free when you're up to five accounts, but anything more than that, you have to start paying money. And these companies are probably going to be compliant with law enforcement requests. Um, and plus it changes the, like, when you see posts on Facebook, you can see it's been posted by Hootsuite. Um, however, there's another bit of software which is um, far less likely to um, help out law enforcement. Uh, it's called Monster Social. It's ba basically a bot management platform. And it works with Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, 
um, Tumblr, Twitter. It's really, really neat, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. So when you are creating these Sock Puppet accounts, um, Facebook, I'm not sure what their triggers are, and it would take quite a while to figure out what they are. Um, but if it looks dodgy, you're going to get challenged. So the account will get locked, and then you get asked to send a recent pic of yourself. So I've only got one pic of this person I've used, created the fake account from, and I've flipped it. So I just take the unflipped version and then send it up, and then my account gets unlocked again. <laughs> um, using 2FA will also um, provide validity to your profile, as I mentioned before. So you might, um, when it gets locked, it might be like, hey, we've seen some, um, some dodgy behavior on your account. Are you, are, you, are you OK, Simon? Are you still there? Um, I sure am. Um, just send me an SMS to my bank of modems, and I'll sort you out. So the Troll Factory came across a similar problems, and there's a really great, I could only really, I couldn't find much information about the, um, the Troll Factory, except there's a Russian site where they'd interviewed some of the ex-employees, and it's um, in Russian, so I had to um, translate it, um, well, using Google Translate. I didn't manually go and learn Russian and then translate it. <laughs> um, and so when Facebook blocks accounts of trolls, the um, IT department, my Russian accent's terrible. I'm not even going to try. I got a friend to record that bit before. Um, so they um, buy a proxy server, issue new IP addresses, virtual OSs, and the work begins anew. And also SIM cards or cloud numbers are purchased and new payments accounts are open. So my methodology is following theirs. Seems to be good so far. So. With the SOC, account, um, SOC Puppet accounts, you need to tailor your profiles. So you need to match your profiles to um, the personality types. You need, so someone who will resonate with their new friends. And to do this, um, I'm be, I've been using the Ocean Personality Test. So based on what you like and what you post, you can figure out if someone's an extrovert or very agreeable or slightly neurotic. People say, but Bogan, the ocean personality test, it's, it's a load of junk. It only caters for 56% of the population. It doesn't account for thriftiness and honestiness and sense of humor, all these other things. But if it's good enough for Cambridge Analytica, it's good enough for me. <laughs> so those of you who don't know who Cambridge Analytica are, a global election management agency, um, offshoot of SCL Group, and part owned by um, Robert Mercer, who helped funds his buddy Steve Bannon and um, Breitbart News. It took me a long time to find a smiling picture of Steve Bannon. All of them are like the grumpy cat, like downturned face. It's a very sad man. But he is smiling, lovely smile in this photo. So Cambridge Analytica has between 3,000 and 5,000 data points on every American, which is terrifying. They know their age, their income, their debt, their hobbies, criminal history, gun ownership. Um, some of it's collected by them by um, scraping social media, and they're just purchasing it bulk from all these other American suppliers as well. Um, they're assisted with the Brexit and Trump campaigns and currently under investigation by the House Parliament Select Committee on Intelligence. So, in order to profile yourself um, to figure out what your uh, ocean score is, the Cambridge um, University, which is funnily enough where Cambridge Analytica grew out of, um, they've got an API called Magic Source. So you can obtain, obtain a list of your profile likes and posts, and you can either use give it access to your account, or you can just manually get that data and pump it into the API. Um, and once your profile type is known, you can start to friend people with similar profile types. Um, and we need to keep this method later for when we're doing a dark ads. Um, so my um, personality type and my fake account was organized and hardworking. Story, I, and I wasn't even trying to make it like that. It just knew. <laughs> just knew. It also estimated that my profile age type <laughs> was 12. It's mainly because I was doing what kind of cat are you surveys. <laughs> so, centers of influence. We need to figure out where we're going to spread our message to. Um, so, figuring out numbers of how many New Zealanders are using social media is quite tricky. 
Um, Facebook reckon they've got about 2.9 million um, New Zealand users. Each of them spend, visit Facebook 14 times a day, rotting their brain for 50 minutes. Twitter has around 500,000. Um, Instagram and ye old stuff comments. Center of influence. Um, we're also figuring out, um, because we're going to be targeting, targeting specific electorates in New Zealand, because each electorate down south, they're a little bit more different to uh, we are, we are up, no, up north. Um, so um, parliament.nz website has got a lot of great demographic information as well, which we could um, feed in. Um, getting some friends. So Facebook location search will allow you to um, figure out where your new friends are going to come from. Um, we can see here some people in Gore Southland working at KFC and doing a whole lot of F all at unemployed, and he spelled unemployed wrong. Um, yeah, you used to be able to use the API to do this, but now you have to scrape your, using the web UI, which is a bit annoying. Um, this is what Monster Social looks like doing it. To their friends list. You know, they could have 100, 200, 1,000, 5,000 friends. I'm going to make them suggest to every single one of their friends to add whatever account I choose. Now in this um, demonstration, I'm going to be making them add Kai Davidson. So I'm going to put Kai Davidson's URL in the program here, and now it's going to start logging into all these accounts at once, and it's going to start sending suggestions. So it's fetching receivers. Now if we have a look, it's starting to send suggestions. So what's going to happen is every single one of these people that are coming up right now are going to get a suggestion. It's going to come up in their little friends box right here, telling them to add them. Now, look, you can do this manually if you want, but you can also do it with Monster Social, as you can see what I'm doing here, and I'm doing this many at once. Now have a look at this, 117 friends. To like, so that was pretty quick. So for every, so he's only running like six or seven fake accounts there, and each one of those has got 5,000, 1,000, or oh, so 500, 1,000, 1,500 friends. They all get suggested to add this new account, and then suddenly that new account is like if I let that video run for longer, it goes 100, 200, 300, and pretty soon, like within a few seconds, you've got 500 friends on that account. And so the ability to ramp up and create your sock puppet army, once you've got a few feeder accounts, you can just start going nuts. It's ridiculous. And that's just that suggest a friend feature of Facebook. Um, hitting your straps. So one of the fake accounts I was running, um, I created, I, I started adding a few people, and people will just accept your friend requests. We all know this on, on Facebook, because they want to be liked. They want to have more friends than their friend. Um, and as soon as you get into the bot networks, because there's lots of existing bot networks out there, um, then you, the, the friend requests just start flying in. So one morning I'd um, added some people with, um, um, or some bots effectively, and then they had then suggested out to their bot network, say this person's accepting these friend requests, and then like the next morning I wake up and there's like 228 new requests, and then 290, and then if I add all of those to my account, then I'll have 500 new friend requests. And within the period of a week, you can probably get to the 5,000 friend limit um, pretty bloody quickly. Um, creation of content, so a pro-gun voter, whose ocean score ranks some higher neuroticism could see storm clouds in a threat. The Democrat wants to take his guns away. So we want to create content like that. We want to make people scared. Um, so Facebook, allegedly. So Facebook split testing helps you do this. They help you test different ads, see what kind of impact they're going to have, and see who's going to click on stuff and, and do things. Um, so the um, Hilton um, hotel chain um, used this exact technique to run um, some adverts that they were doing um, to see which types of people were clicking on ads. And so if you've got someone with high extroversion, um, they're, and they're very um, open and keen on doing things, then let's give them an ad where someone's like whacking a volleyball and outside with their shirt off and like high fives all around. And then if someone's very agreeable, they probably want an ad where you're wearing a cardigan, you've got like some um, you've got like a family situation and things are a lot more relaxed. None of this energetic like jumping and volleyball stuff. Um, so we don't really want to leave a financial trail. So if I can get some free campaigns, I will. And every now and again, like my Google inbox is saying, hey, here's some uh, more AdWords or free AdWord campaigns and they'll be for like $150. 
Um, so you want to jump on as many of those as you can. Um, but direct marketing via posting of content is the way to go as well. So using your follower base to push your particular message. Um, you want to send different adverts to, or dark advertising is a concept of sending different adverts to different target audience groups, where it would be disadvantageous for group A to see group B's ads. So w the way to do that, to target it directly, is using that magic source again. We're going to harvest our target's likes via scraping, which will give us our ocean personality type, plug them into magic source, and target them directly. So the way Cambridge Analytica do this is they, have you ever seen those personality tests or see what type of cat I am? They, they run a lot of those campaigns and they harvest all that information. They've already got your profile ID and that's how they figure this stuff out. So we're just going to do it manually. Um, and again, using the mobile version of the site, this is what someone's likes look like on the mobile version. And then you can just take all the href links and you've got all the likes. Simple. And then we wait. So we measure it. Um, so IBM Watson's got the natural language um, API, um, which does neuro-linguistic programming stuff and figures out sentiment, emotion, keywords, and entities. So you can, as your campaign's running, you can see how people are talking about it and measure how effective it is becoming. Then go and adapt your message and get trolling. All right, so this is all bad. What kind of countermeasures can we take? I always like, like having an idea of like how we can possibly fix this horrible, horrible situation. So we're building these Silicon Valley platforms that are set up to optimize for self-radicalization. Uh, the way forward is for us citizens of the internet, and that's what we all are, to educate ourselves and our families that what we're seeing through Facebook um, newsfeed is created whether it is by human or compu computer, and to understand the difference between an ad and an organic story from your friends, um, it's something, and sometimes it's hard to tell. That's a lovely sentiment, Matt, um, but that made me cry rainbow tears of laughter because it's just not gonna happen. We're not gonna be able to tell everyone, hey, like, you know, Facebook's bad, and like, we shouldn't listen to these ads, we don't know if they're real or not. Um, we need a, a stronger approach, I think. Um, regulators like the Electoral, uh, Electoral Commission would always be playing catch up when it came to regulating emerging technology. So we can't sort of regulate our way out of this problem. Long term maybe this is something we need to look at as a society and say well if this is our view of the world and it's been controlled by some publicly listed company in California, do we want some control or some transparency around that? Very wise word from the goat farm. So Facebook made $44 billion in ad revenue in the past two years. That's an obscene amount of money. The famous Patrick Gray, Gray said, um, they've replaced human creation with automated creation. To fix this, you need to fundamentally change the model, which is right. And he interviewed um, a lady on his show who said, you can still be super wealthy, but not minting at that current speed. Um, they have been minting at this speed and not paying for any of the externalities involved in it. You wouldn't let a company do something just because they're used to making a lot of money, unless you're a shareholder, of course. Then you can keep going. Um, maybe they aren't meant to be this profitable, right? Maybe instead of making $44 billion, maybe they could just make $20 billion and do a better job of curating the ads that come on their platform. Uh, the, there's a German outfit called uh, Who Target Stop Me? And they tell you which political ca campaigns use dark ads and uh, micro-targeting to influence your vote. And they do this with a browser extension that collects all your ads that are coming on the Facebook platform. They feed it into a big uh, machine learning AI thing and, um, and figure out what, what's going on. And I was um, mes messaging them on Twitter last night saying, hey, um, and this is um, chatting to pipes about this as well, what about if they took all those ads and they saw that they were, um, be, they were dodgy effectively, if they just feed that straight back into Facebook as uh, uh, into a reporting mechanism and then make it Facebook's problem again. Uh, there's a the German Marshall Fund. Um, so the Germans are really forward thinking in this space. They actually um, have got a good sense of um, democracy, I suppose, and they want to make sure that it is secured. 
Um, so they're monitoring um, around 600 Twitter accounts that are linked to the, um, the Ru Russian influence operations at the moment, and they are um, figuring out what topics they're talking about, what type of hashtags they're posting, URLs that they're sending out. Um, yeah, they're doing a really neat job of this. But 600 Twitter accounts is only the tip of the iceberg. Where we saw before, there was 63,000 accounts that were splurting out this, um, this news. Uh, there's the Facebook ad police. So Facebook have recently, this was off the back of the congressional hearings into the, um, the, how Russia was manipulating the elections. So they've hired 250 people now to police adverts on the site. Um, they're notifying tens of millions of users. This was just the other day they um, put out the statement. So if you have liked or followed one of those um, Russian influencer accounts, they're going to notify you and say, hey, Simon, by the way, remember that ad you saw six months ago? Well, that was the Russians. Um, and they're also implementing mechanisms to detect fake news. Um, so AI, manual fact checking. Um, so the, it's a small, um, a small step, but hopefully we'll see this um, capability grow. Twitter as well, doing a great job as always. Um, everyone celebrated the 280 characters. Meanwhile, Twitter verified another white supremacist. So, what can we do? Delete Facebook, delete Twitter, go outside and play in the sunshine. Uh, I don't know. I think that, yeah, forcing these big companies to do better is what we need to do. Make less money, do better curate this content and, and stop this from happening again. Because there's a war out there, old friend, a world war. It's not about who got the most bullets, it's about who controls the information. So I will be running for the 2021 election. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you.